team stay close don't we have a wonderful amazing team i'm so grateful for our music ministry not only do they sing but they're anointed <laughs> that's what makes a difference amen Woo, what are we gonna do <laughs> we're gonna read the word because i have an assignment tonight and you could go ahead and take your seat tonight and I'm just so grateful, thank you, babe, because I call you babe up here, <laughs> for this uh, privilege. You know, I struggle, right? I struggle every time I speak. I say, I'm not speaking anymore. I, after I go, don't ever ask me to speak. But um, thank you for always keeping me challenged. And you might say, man, what's wrong with this girl? Because every time I'm like around her, she's quiet. But once she gets on that stage and takes the mic and preaches the word of God, something takes place. How many know that's the power, what the power of God does? I want to thank those that serve, serve in this church. You serve in Kids Gang. You, you serve ushering wherever you serve. I thank you tonight. And I also want to thank those that give generously. Without you, we could not do what we're doing. Give yourself a hand if you're a generous giver. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence that is so strong, God. God, I come with your word, not my word, your word, God. And I'm here to be obedient to that. Remove me to the side, God. Let every heart be open. Let every mind be attentive, God. But also let us see, God, in the supernatural tonight. We love you. And together we say, hey, man, I need that water break. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, so the title of my message tonight is This Means War. I want you to look at your neighbor. You're going to be like, huh? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, this means war. How many know that you don't have to look too far to be able to say that we're in a spiritual war, right? You just turn on the TV and you're like, it is crazy. I can't even watch the news like I used to because it is crazy. How many know it's ugly? You could scroll on your social media and you see the war that is taking place, the rumors of war, the war that's an attack on the church. And as I begin to study, I begin to think, of an individual, but as I was there in my seat, my, the Lord began to tell me, not only is this word for an individual, but this word is for the church of God. This word is for the body of Christ. And if you've been saved for a short moment, right, you've, you've heard spiritual warfare messages, right? This is not your first spiritual warfare message. Uh, we know them. We know the scriptures, right? This, this, uh, these weapons we fight, are not carnal, but they're spiritual. We know those wep uh, the weapons are to pull down the powers of this world. The, how many know, the, you probably know, no weapon forged against me shall prosper. We know all those weapons, those warfare scriptures. Sorry, I have a little attitude. <laughs> but many of us have gone through personal battles. Anyone here has been going through personal battles? Half of the church says amen. <laughs> but also we've gone through battles as a corporate, right? As a body, as a church. We've gone through battles uh, as a body. We've been hit. We've been discouraged. Um, but I truly believe that all those things you've gone through, all those battles that you've gone through is just a dress rehearsal for what is getting ready to take place. It is just a practice. It's been a practice for all these years that you have been fighting the good fight, it is just to prepare you for the real war. See, when you think of the military, how many know they just don't show up to the battlefield hoping they win a battle? They don't show up to the battlefield in hopes to have a battle plan. No, they have been training year after year after year. They've been training for, for war. And you know that they act out, right? Does anybody from the military? Somewhere out there, <laughs> right? They have bases. 
And in those bases, they begin to practice. They begin to have scenarios of possibilities of what could take place when they go out to war. And so they don't go onto the, on, onto the battleground uh, just nonchalant or, or not knowing anything. They have been preparing. Tell your neighbor, I have been preparing. And we know that there are many different roles that the military has, right? The front line, boots on the ground. There's the snipers. The snipers will, can shoot you from here all the way across the street, right? They're trained. I'm about to, the Lord's going to do that tonight. <laughs> He's going to snipe some of us. The Navy, right? I, I like to say the Navy stops those coming from seas to entering the land. And then the Air Force are those that they could see on high places. They're able to attack those before they come through the air. But just as the military has different uses, how many know that the army of God, we have different strategies to win this spiritual warfare? And we know them, right? We know them. It should be common sense. But what is it? Prayer, fasting, the word, and worship are just a few of the weapons the Lord and the Holy Spirit, our Father, has given us. And... And I'm not here right tonight to try to give the enemy glory and to give him, you know, a radio time. But what I am here to do, what the Holy Spirit is here to do is to expose him. This is a message about exposing the enemy. See, some here under the sound of my voice have been under attack. And you don't even know it. You've been feeling things and you have not been able to recognize that it is the enemy of your soul that is after you. We've been feeling things and we don't know how to put our finger on it. Sensing things, a heaviness, but yet, I don't know what's going on, we say. See, the enemy has come for your spiritual weapons. The enemy has come to take from you what you need in this battle. See, some of us might be in a chokehold tonight. Anybody's ever been in a chokehold? <laughs> the whole church? A chokehold, right? A chokehold. And he has us in a chokehold. He has us in the chokeholds of our weapons that we use, the weapon of worship. You can't even lift your hands. We're here and the spirit is moving and you can't even lift your hands. You can't even open your mouth to give him glory. Sister and brother, you are under attack. He has a chokehold on the weapon of your giving. There has been a devourer over your finances so you cannot help advance the kingdom of God. I have a tip. Spend more, give less. He has a chokehold on the weapon of your gratitude. See, we operate, when we operate, when we don't operate in gratitude, we operate in a never enough spirit. And I deserve it spirit. It's all about me and my feeling spirit. And you know what? Another one is we refuse to celebrate people's wins. That's a chokehold on your gratitude. He has a chokehold on your weapon of love. The enemy plans to make his plan and his, to make our hearts cold. If he can make our hearts cold, he has the rest. Right? If he could take our heart from our Lord, if he could take the, the focus of our heart from our Lord to ourselves and to this world, he has us in the bag. He has a chokehold on the weapon of your calling. There are many here that are called. Yes, we're all called, but there's some that are here called to answer uh, to full-time ministry, to take a city, to run a life group, whatever it might be. But when you, he, you know what he comes for? He comes for your passion. He comes for your purpose because when you don't have purpose, you don't have passion. And he's trying to choke your freedom and your joy. I'm here to tell you I'm here to expose the enemy. I'm here not to preach so much to a crowd. I'm not here to preach to a camera tonight, wherever you're at. 
I'm here to preach to the principalities in high places. I'm going to say that again. I'm not so much here to preach to a crowd or to cameras, but I'm here to preach to the principalities, to the darkness, to the enemy that has been trying to attack your life. That's who I'm preaching to tonight. I'm preaching a declaration against demonic forces in this region, in this church, on the body of Christ. But I thank God that there is a remnant in this house. There is a remnant in the Bay Area. There is a remnant in Victory Outreach International that says, I refuse to put my weapons down. They, we have been crying now for God. God, we need a move. God, not on my watch. Not on my watch. There is a remnant of people that are not just going to sit around and pretend that we're not at war. It's, it, you could numb yourself, right? I could numb myself and pretend that there's not wickedness in this world. I, I, don't be, I can't even believe what's taking place in our world. I really can't. It's, it's, it's crazy. But there's a remnant of people who say, I am not afraid to pick up my sword and fight. And that's why you're here tonight, because you're not afraid to pick up your sword and fight. But tonight, I have an assignment to expose and rebuke the spirit of Python. I'm here to expose its grip. That choke you've been feeling is a spirit of a Python spirit. What is a Python spirit? It's a divination. It's a false spirit. It tries to act like the truth. It tries to act like the truth. It tries to act on behalf of the Lord. It's a spirit of false truth. See, the python spirit grabs hold of you and attempts to squeeze the breath out of you spiritually. The breath. And you know the only way that we're going to be able to break this grip is with the sacrifice of praise and the blood of Jesus Christ. It's assignment, see, the excitement of the spirit is to restrict and constrict all areas, especially in prayer and the prophetic. So once again, this is, could be an individual message, but it's also for the body, the church. The python spirit, it is cunning. You don't know you're being wrapped up until it's too late. See, the word breath in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit and life. The python spirit wants to choke the anointing out of our lives. See, when we read the Bible, my one-year Bible, it's been through a few battles. My one-year Bible, my Bible, when I read it, I breathe in. <laughs> and when I pray, I breathe out. So when we're not reading our Bible and we're not praying, we have spiritual asthma. We have spiritual asthma. And we can't breathe in or out. The word of God is the breath of life. Prayer is the breath of life. Amen? And so... Some might be experienced, like I said tonight, spiritual asthma. But how many know it is time to breathe again? I want you to tell your neighbor, it's time to breathe again. I want you to take a breath in and a breath out. <laughs> I'm like a motiv motivational speaker tonight. <laughs> Count to ten. No, I'm just kidding. Breathe in and breathe out the word of God. See, we know that Satan is a father of lies, but yet we still seem to believe them. I, and I'm, I'm preaching to myself, okay? <laughs> I'm preaching to myself. His deceptions are to choke the life out of our dreams. See, how do you know when you're under attack? What are some warning signs? Constant, number one, constant cycle of defeat and failure. There's a constant cycle of defeat and failure, a constant sense of suffocation. 
heavy. I, can't, I don't know what's going on. Constant sense of powerless. A constant sense of limitation and hopelessness along with depression. Can a Christian be depressed? Of course. Can a Christian feel hopelessness? Of course. Can a, a person feel a constant sense of limitation? Of course. Constant fatigue and health problems. Constant procrastination and a lack of motivation. The Spirit would rather us lick our wounds than pray for healing. The Spirit will rather us gossip or complain to others than take our challenges to the feet of God, the feet of Jesus. It would rather distract us with trials and persecutions than to be pressing in to God. But tonight we are going to give the enemy his eviction notice. See, tonight, oh, I'm spitting. Now you know I'm a preacher now, so I'm spitting. <laughs> hey, I just, I just walked into new territory. I'm spitting, preacher. <laughs> but tonight, there is a court order from heaven. See, we're here once again to give the enemy eviction notice, and that court order of heaven is here. See, what's an eviction? Some of us might know what that is. <laughs> Right? It's a removal of a tenant from a property where he resides. It's being evicted due to damages, illegal activity, or violating the terms of a lease in time to take possession of a property, right? So it's time to take possession of, that God, of God's property. See, the eviction process begins with a notice from the landlord and asks the tenant to leave. It's time to evict every hindering spirit that has been breathing down your neck. See, you are the landlord to God's temple. You are the landlord to this temple. You're not the owner, <laughs> but you're the landlord. And it's up to us to evict the enemy. It's time for us to clean house and take back the inheritance Inheritance that is promised to you and your children and your family and your marriage. I could keep going on. And I want you tonight with me, I want you to tell that python spirit, I evict you. I evict you in the name of Jesus. See, when someone goes camping, anybody goes camping? Are you a camping? Anybody a camping person? Pastor Keith? <laughs> See, campers, right, if you're an expert, I'm, I'm assuming, right, you, you put your stuff down, but you're going to get that fire camp ready, right? You're going to get that fire going. And see, when you create that campfire, it's not so much just to stay warm, but do you know that campfires repel the snakes and those creepy things from your campsite? If you didn't know that, well, now you know. <laughs> see, the heat of the flame and the smoke deters these snakes and these little creepy things. Just the same, the fire of God, the fire of God keeps away the things that come and choke the breath of God. This is why it's so important to stay close to the fire of God. Where is the fire of God? The fire of God is wherever you put your campsite on. The fire of God is when you bring your wood and you say, Lord, I'm the wood. You are the fire. Oh, burn me, Lord. The campfire is here at church. The campfire is in your home. The campfire is at your job. The campfire is in your car. Wherever you're at, you're able to create a campfire because all you need is wood. That I am the wood. He is the fire. In Acts 2 a it says, but Paul shook the snakes off into the fire and suffered no ill effect. See, you might get bitten. You might have been bitten. But what we're going to do tonight is we're going to shake it off. Tell your neighbor, shake it off. It's all over your face. Shake it off. <laughs> See, Paul got, uh, he got bit by the snake. But what did he do? He shook it off and he threw it in the fire. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, tonight you're going to shake it off and you're going to put it in the fire. 
of God. Let God work for you. Let God handle your battles. Let God go before you and level every mountain. See, the fire isn't always there to burn, but it's there to protect. Some of us are afraid to get close to the fire because it's calling us to change, calling us to get right. It's calling us to, 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 to flee from sin. It's calling us from selfishness. And sometimes we're afraid to get close to the fire. But tonight, we're going to jump in that fire. <laughs> Keith, can you get the fire and the oil, please? <laughs> Just kidding. And the team co uh, make their way up. What are things that you need to shake off tonight? Only you know, you and the Lord. What are areas in your life that you need to get closer to the fire? And we're, like I said, my title, when I was studying, I was like, I'm going to speak on the glory of God. And I'm on the glory thing right now. There's so much to it. You have to take probably a whole year series just to explain the glory of God. That's how powerful it is. And I go, well, I'm going to speak on warfare, right? Okay. But then this python spirit, I couldn't shake it. I couldn't shake it. Like I wanted to come on a Wednesday and speak about the python spirit, right? But I had to be obedient. These spiritual wars, what are the wars that we're up against as a body of Christ? See, there's a war against revival. The enemy wants us to think that it's not for us, it's just for them. See, what keeps us at war with revival, you want to know what keeps us at war with revival? You want us, it's unconfessed sins. Some of us have unconfessed sins. Pride, prayerlessness, and we've heard it, that religious spirit. There's another war that we're against is the war of truth. And this one's been heavy. It's called the apostasy. Do you know that there's a, we're here? It, like, we're live right now? <laughs> like, we're live in the end times. It's not tomorrow. It's not 10 years from now. We're here. And what does the word of God says? In the last day, there will be a great falling away. I'm not talking about the world. They're already fallen. He's talking about the church. He's talking about me. He's talking about you. That's what we're up against is a great apostasy. It's an abandonment of the faith. See, there are many false teachers out there. We could put on YouTube all day and come across many platforms of preachers and prophets, but there's a lot of fake prophets out there, fake teachers. They're now speaking against the word of God. Big, huge churches, mega churches are speaking against this word. They water it down. You know the gospel is being watered down? The other day, they did a, a Easter presentation, and it had girl as a Jesus. Apostasy. There's another pastor out there. He's saying not everything in here is true. It's an apostasy. My heart began to break. Not so much because of me. But because the many thousands of people they're deceiving right now. They're watering down the blood of Jesus and the power of the cross. See, these are people that follow trends instead of the truth. Trends. No. There's two genders. There's a boy and there's a girl. And that's it. Two genders. Anything else is an apostasy, a fall away from the truth. See, 
the world wants. This is the world infiltrating the church. It wants us. It wants the church to believe that there is that the, there's no truth about God in the Bible. The truth is your truth. Whatever your truth is is your truth. That's an apostasy. In 1 Timothy 4:1 it says, "Many will fall away in the end times." There's your scripture to prove it, okay? Write it down. Going after the teachings of demons. Sorry, guys, I still haven't seen that. It says, let no one in any way deceive you. There's so much false information. We have to be careful what we're feeding our spirit. See, the word to me, this, right, what I'm holding, is my lifeline. It's my lifeline. So you're telling me, and you're coming against my lifeline. This word is what encourages me. This word is what gives me hope. This word is what keeps me moving forward. How dare you come against the word of God? This is, don't, don't talk about my Bible. I'll smack you with it. This means war. This means war. This is war. This is war. This is war. I'm going to keep saying it. This is war. This means war. This means war. And I'm getting ready to close. But in the book of Acts, we've seen that Saul and pa uh, Paul and Silas were thrown in the jail because they casted out a spirit, a python spirit, out of a woman. And they were locked up because of that. But you know, at that midnight hour, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And then what happened? The prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and every chain was loose. Every chain was loose. Have you ever seen people set free because prayer and praise? I think you're here tonight and set free because of your prayer praise. See, in your midnight moment, you might be in a midnight moment right now. But in that midnight moment, what are we going to do? We're going to say, God, I'm hurting, but yet I praise you anyway. God, I don't know why I'm going through this trial, but I'm going to praise you anyway. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. But I'm going to praise you anyway. And so right where you're at, just begin to praise him. We praise oh, begin to praise him and watch those shackles be broken. Begin to praise him and watch the choking of the pipe up be broken. We praise your name. We praise your holy name.
watch. There's some that are here. You've been really going through it. You don't understand what you do now. That spirit that has been choking your passion. It's been choking your love. It's been choking different areas in your life that you used to be so joyful about. Begin to lay hands on him. Oh, begin to lay hands. 
hands on him. Oh, you are healed in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, there is healing.
Come on, somebody say, I'm ready. Come on, the church of Fremont is ready. I love it. I believe that we are on the forefront. I believe that we are, we are going to be the ones making a way. We are going to be the ones looking out for other, not just other people, but for other churches. Come on, because we're setting an example. Amen. God is really doing something in our hearts, and I hope you're excited about that. Tonight, we're going to um, go ahead and conclude by uh, just being able to just worship the Lord in our giving. So if you need an envelope tonight, lift your hands. You can lift your hands. There's ushers to your left and to your right. And we just want to be able to, man, how many know that giving is also warfare? 
Come on, giving is also warfare. Man, we all feel it. We all feel the tug. We all feel the, the opposition. But you know what? When you feel that opposition, just give. Come on, give. Sometimes, sometimes you, you have to give to put yourself in a situation where only God can get you out of it, where only you can depend on God, where it looks like there's no way. Come on, it looks like there's no road. It looks like there's no door. But when you step out in faith, man, God is always faithful. He is always faithful. He is always there. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that he will always provide. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you guys ready to give tonight? Amen. The usher's going to come to the front. I uh, just want to remind you that uh, this Sunday, 10 a.m., we'll be back here for our Sunday morning celebration service. And uh, just come ready to worship and ready to praise. Come on. We get this same breakthrough every service. We get this same kind of receiving or whatever it is, man. We set an atmosphere when we come in to praise. We, we set the atmosphere uh, for, for the preacher to preach, we set the atmosphere for, for whatever it is that's in the service, man, for God to be able to move. How many know that we need faith? Come on, we need faith. God said when he went to his hometown, he couldn't do many miracles because there was no faith. Amen. And so the worship sets that all up. Let's go ahead and pray. We'll end tonight. Uh, have a great night tonight. Bring your offering after I pray, and then you'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for everything you're doing here, God. Oh, Lord, we thank you for men and women of God, Lord, that, oh, uh, Lord, God, we're not special, God. We're not talented. We're not the best gifted, God, kind of people, God, Lord, God, but we love you, God, Lord, and we trust in you, God, and we know that you are doing a thing here, God, Lord, and, Lord, and we just put our trust in that tonight, God, Lord. We love you. We thank you, God, for what we felt here tonight. We thank you for the breakthroughs. God, we thank you for the release, God, that you have given, the freedom that you are giving this church, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that there would be a freedom, God, Lord, on every family and every giver, God, Lord, uh, as we just give an offering to you tonight, God. We worship you, God, with our finances, Lord. We worship you, God, with every part of us, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen.